Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitcher International with me, Darius Anchauskas. Today is the 26th of September 2023. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this um, Tuesday's, yeah, Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear from that little left corner and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so now then, um, also, uh, just before we go further, as always, just a quick mentioning of our um, Easy Markets website, which you can always check out for more information about it, guys. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Yes. So, oh, uh, GB Cavo. Uh, okay, this is GB Cavo BR. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Made it live this time. Okay, so honestly, happy. Um, I'm personally happy because. Um, it's really, really great when somebody can, you know, jump in and can actually interact. I know it sounds cheesy and everything. I get it. Like, but in general, actually, it, it is like that little feeling inside you that actually kind of gives you a little boost. You know, that actually somebody's out there. You're not just talking to your screen yourself. <laughs> but you know, but yeah, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for jumping in, and thank you very much for everybody else who's tuning in right now. So I hope you're having a wonderful start of Tuesday, guys. So, so without further ado let's jump into the charts and the first one as always i want to pick up here is nikkei 225 look uh this one here is the same doing the same thing here i talked about this uh with you uh yesterday as well that i said to you that in order for me to consider maybe the next uh move here somewhere either to the upside or to the downside a break so for the upside i need to see a push above the 50-day ema for the uh for the downside a drop below the uh 100 day ema here is required so that's my simplistic approach here look in general the markets are not feeling very well i think however i'm sticking to my idea that maybe uh something might change and look yesterday's recovery at the end of the session that kind of gave me that little spark of hope that um, actually the markets can actually drift back to the depth to the upside a little bit and the reason why i'm saying about i'm talking about this is that look uh i already mentioned this but you know what i'll mention this when i'm gonna get into dow and the s p so uh, look for now from the technical perspective uh nikkei is this is the game plan for me for nikkei i'm waiting for a pop either above the 50-day ema or a drop below the 100-day ema right there in order to consider the next short-term directional move uh china 50 so this one's a mess uh to be honest i think that yes uh I was kind of hoping to see maybe a rebound from this downside line and kind of we got that rebound and uh we it was initially working out well but now it's not working so i think that i need to go back to the drawing board and kind of uh you know approach it from a different perspective so basically if i want to go higher the same level remains valid uh push above the 12721 territory would be ideal um if i get that great uh, i will then aim for the 100 day ema and then the 200 day EMA. So for the downside, as I said before, I need to see a break of this upside line drawn from the low of the 1st of June. So far, it is providing uh, fantastic support. So if I get that drop, then yes, I will consider slightly lower levels. Of course, we do have this obstacle on the way lower the uh, lowest point of June uh, and actually the lowest point of this year, which is still in the way here near the 12,204 zone. But if that gets cleared, well, guess what? The forthcoming lower low will be confirmed. ASX 200. So yes, ASX 200. The, this one is, look, I talked about this yesterday and I said to you that, hey, maybe this is forming something of a bearish flag. However, if we think that this is a bearish flag, we need that confirmation break at least through this uh, 7,040 territory somewhere around here. If I get that, great. Uh, this potentially could attract a few more sellers into the game. Uh, for the upside, look, I talked about this as well. Uh, yesterday, I said that if we do push, and we did push initially, we pushed above the 7,106 zone, and uh, but we, if we stay above that area, 
that's where the excitement could come in. Um, and then, yes, uh, we could see maybe a bit of a larger correction to the upside. So at the moment, uh, but only I'm aiming for this 7,150 zone initially. And then I'll take it from there because I don't want to rush into things because, again, this is quite an important area of support. Let's see. Um, let's see if that can hold. But again, for the upside, as I said, I need to see a push and, and I need to see the body of the daily candle staying above the 7,106 territory. Um, so uh, now then, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So this is the interesting bit comes in. Um, OK, yesterday, uh, the Dow managed to just scrape that little moment of positivity you know back at the end of the session and kind of stayed in the positive territory for the day um look uh the other ones nasdaq and the s p did not have that big of a problem to do to do so uh they managed to to stay in positive territory with like around uh, one one like S and P zero point four percent gain, uh, Nasdaq zero point forty five percent gain. So okay, uh, Dow was only zero point thirteen. So okay, uh, look in general, uh, it's not everything is that bad. And look, I I said to you yesterday that um, um, I'm kind of uh, considering the idea of um maybe seeing a retracement you know uh retracement back to the upside so the reason why i'm talking about this is that uh because of this little thing here i, I mentioned this yesterday in my morning video uh so let me just load it up again some somehow it's not uh loading up for some reason let me just see if that's gonna do the trick there we go so uh, this is what I'm what I was saying yesterday. So basically, running all the way into up to this November first meeting, maybe this will somehow stabilize here. You know, like 50-50. To be honest, I'm kind of leaning more towards a rate hike in uh, December because again, they said they're gonna do they're gonna go for one more rate hike. Well, um, I think that November meeting is a little bit too early. And maybe they will keep it, you know, up to December just to, to have that uh, wait and see approach uh, the moment to stick to that one. So that's why the market might think, hey, you know what? We got our little correction. Uh, maybe we'll drift a little bit more to the downside. But actually, um, let's, you know, we will adjust to the fact that uh, there will be another increase. Uh, there will be another rate increase. And let's push the index back to the upside um i'm not saying that we're gonna go radically higher or something like that no but um maybe a nice retracement back up here could be possible so just kind of keep that in mind guys so uh yeah uh look if you're if we somehow climb back above the 100 day ema then yes potentially this could attract um a few more buyers maybe we could go and test this downside line this upside line i think is no longer needed it it has done its job um and uh now i think that yes um um now the question is can we see a rebound from this territory from this 200 uh day ema so from the technical perspective from my perspective as well uh that uh in order for me to go lower a, a drop below this territory is required so below that 34 uh 34,063 territory so that's the few these are the futures that i'm looking at so uh just kind of keep that in mind guys um on the cash index we might see a bit of a different story um however uh, not too different maybe so just with a different pricing but okay look still still fine still okay um, at this point uh, another thing here that's coming into my head and um, um, okay th these are these gone channels uh, sorry not gone not gone channel, butterfly butterfly formations I mean some of you might like to draw these personally me I don't uh, but look, I mean, if you do see this some in, in this some sort of value, like uh, basically a rebound from here, you know, to the upside, okay, like you can utilize that, but you need to kind of know all the numbering here as well. So that's not there, you know, for no reason. 
Um, so, uh, like I said, at the moment, I mean, I'm trying to keep it short and simple. So I'm, I'm actually utilizing this 200 day EMA. As long as we stay above it, there is a chance for us to see a push back up here. However, probably more buyers could join in if we do climb back above the 100 day EMA. Um, nevertheless, I'm not excluding a drop below the 34,063 territory right here. Um, if we do stay below it, then my next target is the 33,800 zone somewhere around here that's on the futures uh the s p 500 so there we go we're uh, testing this highlighted zone i talked about this yesterday um and uh yes so far so good um look we could still drift lower that's absolutely fine and uh, we could still drift uh, further uh further south but for this i need to see a drop below that 4350 territory yesterday we got that but we kind of quickly pushed back above it that's the interesting bit. So maybe actually we're not ready to go lower. However, everything is possible. So that's why I'm going to keep an eye on the 4,350 territory for now. Then if we do get a clearance of that one again, uh, I will aim for the 200 day EMA. And if, if that gets cleared, then yes, certainly I will go further south. However, uh, it's kind of contradicting to my uh, theory, which I said already before when I was covering, when I was talking about that, that maybe a bit of upside could be possible so the way i'm going to play this one this game here is if i get a push back with the 100 day ema i will consider a move to the upside that's my simplistic approach um i'm not trying to overcomplicate my life here because it's already that so uh yes uh, so let's uh, see uh nasdaq 100 so um uh, another thing about the u.s market i mean keep your eyes on today keep your eyes on the news look we don't have much uh, stuff coming out from europe um we did get the uh, by the way, it seems like BOJ Core CPI came out uh, earlier, which I forgot to mention when I was covering Nikkei. Uh, that came out higher than the uh, pre the forecast, but the same as previous, basically. So 3.3. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. But um, yes, today we're looking at the build building permits in the US. Uh, we're looking at the house price index. We're looking at the mm, new home sales and the CB consumer confidence for September number. So yes, guys, I mean, we might not see much action, but maybe it will come when these figures start coming out. So check out the economic calendar for that. Uh, let me just um, double. Uh, let me just double check myself here very quickly. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's a September twenty sixth. So yes, building permits, uh, red book year on year house prices. There we go. CB consumer confidence, new home sales. So yes, and uh, yes. Um, oh, there's a few speech. Uh, there's a speech here. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Like you're gonna impact a lot, but. Um, Right. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, keep your eyes on the economic calendar in that sense. Uh, looking at NASDAQ uh, 100, so the same game plan applies. Uh, if we do break the lower side of this uh, this kind of triangle pattern, uh, or maybe a veg more, uh, something like that, then uh, yes, we could see a drift, um, a drift further south. But um, let's not forget, like I said, to um, to keep in mind that maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible. If we rebound and we push back above the 100 day EMA, I will consider a move towards the 50 day EMA towards that 15,223 um, or even uh, all the way towards the upper side of this triangle pattern. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, yes, I mean, I think I, I always forget this uh, one thing to do. Good morning, everyone. So, so that it would be just there uh in the chat room so this, i like to do that actually so um please forgive me if, if that you th if you think that this is silly uh dax the german index there we go beautiful drop yesterday so look i talked about this i said to you that if we do fall and stay below that uh 15,600 zone somewhere around here there is a, increases the chances for a further drift south however uh this is dax that we were talking about dax likes to range and at the moment uh we are violating that 15,511 territory which is the lowest point of august uh but don't get me wrong uh there is potential for uh, a rebound from this territory so basically um uh let me i can't you can't see this one it's like not very clear 
Uh, let me just see what I can do here, guys. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Maybe something around this. Um, okay. Okay, okay, there we go. So, look. Um, yeah. Mm. So, let's put it this way. Okay. So, um, if we are looking for some uh, lower levels, guys, there is still a chance for doing that. Look, we're falling below the 200-day EMA. Um, Huxcop1, BTC. Uh, could you do BTC? Uh, it wasn't on my list here. This is the list that I'm going to go through. XRP dot and then XRP and the Polka dot. But look, I'll, I'll, I can pick up on the um, bit on Bitcoin. Uh, it, although I've looked at it today, not much excitement in there, but, um, yeah, let me just pick up on that. Look, uh, at the moment, uh, with the indices, uh, with the indices is the fact that there, yes, there are signs for further declines, of course. That's no doubt there. Uh, but at the same time, it's so difficult to predict right now so that uh, maybe it's going to, like I said, maybe my theory is going to play out and we will see a nice reversal back to the upside. So at this point, yes, everything is kind of in the selling mode. Uh, but again, do not underestimate the power of uh, the bulls because... Uh, maybe they will say, you know what? Okay, that's fine. We can adjust to that you know, extra interest rate hike, you know, by the end of this year. So, you know what? Let's push the market back up. So then that's what I'm looking at. Don't rush yet. We're still at the first stages here, for example, uh, in, in German, on the German DAX, where we're still at the first stages of, let's say, uh, falling below the 200-day EMA. But um, if we continue to trade below that, then yes, I will aim further south. The FTSE 100, this one finally yes it, it finally gave me a much a more clear uh, indication of what it wants to do so it fell below that 7700 uh, territory and now yes we're uh, leaning towards a larger correction to the downside but again mm, i'm keeping it on the 7611 zone first and then i'll take it from there because maybe it will rebound and push back up if it does climb back above the 7700 zone then yes I will consider a move to the upside. US dollar index. Boom. There we go. There we go. Yesterday I talked about this, guys. And uh, yes, we have approached already this uh, key resistance barrier, the 105.87. Uh, look, um, I would say this way, that um, if we are uh, looking for some higher levels, I think we'll have to just play a bit of a waiting game because we did uh, we are we have approached my target here. Um, okay, maybe it's not an ideal uh, test, but we're very close. And by the way, just to let you know that this is the highest point of this year. So maybe we could pop above it a little bit today. But if we struggle to stay above it, maybe a bit of a retracement here back down could be possible. So just keep that in mind. Um, if we do start breaking this upside line, that that's from where I will get a little bit more excited with the uh, with the downside. Uh, gold. So very quickly on gold. Um, beautiful decline. Look, I talked about this. I said that if we do stay below that 1924 territory, my next target is the 200-day EMA, then the 1914 zone. Tick, tick. Uh, and maybe if I get lucky, I could see a test of this upside line drawn from the low of the 20th of August. Well, so far, we are on. it seems like we are on the right track. Now, um, if we do clear this upside line, then yes, uh, potentially more uh, more buy, more sellers could join in. Uh, we could then aim for that psychological 1900 level. You know what? I think I need to draw it this way. And uh, yes, um, I think that this is the uh, the level, the target that I need to keep an eye on. Um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the the upside, well, uh, we'll take a very conservative approach here, and I'll wait for a break of this downside line. This is exactly what I was saying yesterday as well. So the same uh, analysis is valid for the upside. I need to see a break of this downside line. Uh, silver. Uh, oh, there we go. Beautiful decline on silver. Look at this. So we failed to stay above the EMA. So this is what I was uh, kind of. Uh, telling you all the time, guys, kind of wait for this one to stay. Yes, we had these false breakouts, okay, 
But there we go. We failed to stay above the EMAs and we got a, soul, a, soul, a sell off. So now we have tested this 22.95 territory. So if we're going to drift further, um, well, or should I say we will re remain below that territory, then yes, I will aim for the 22.74 territory or this upside support line. In order for me to start a aiming to the upside, I need to see a push back above these EMA, the remaining EMAs here on my daily chart. And the last one here is around the 20. 23.51 territory somewhere around there oil um oil is uh yes drifting back below the 90 territory and i think that what's going to happen here with that 90 territory is the fact that we will uh start oscillating just around that 90 zone so that means that maybe this level is no longer needed the 90 zone is no longer needed um i think that we can actually uh look at something else here for example if you're if you want to push to the upside if you want to see a push to the upside then maybe a, a break of this uh downside line here would be needed um and then yes we could take it from there we could aim for the where's my uh horizontal ray here we could aim for that 92.42 zone which is the uh the highest point of september or should I say the current highest point of september we're still in september so we need to kind of keep that in mind um so yes or if you're looking for some let's say a larger correction to the downside then uh drop below the 88 territory would be required uh bitcoin so bitcoin 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 um Look, uh, Bitcoin is um, an interesting one here. Um, uh, we are seeing a drop below that uh, 26,434. Um, it's interesting at the same time boring, to be honest, because uh, look, it's something like a head and shoulders pattern here. We could say, uh, you know, we're, we broke the neckline, so maybe we're going to drift a little bit lower here. Um, yeah, there is a chance. And to be honest, for me, uh, neckline or no neckline, I was just keeping an eye on this as a, as a good area of support. Now we broke it. So um, let me just highlight that one uh, here. So we broke it. Now what I'm keeping an eye on is some lower levels. If we continue to trade below this uh, broken territory, then yes, I'm aiming for some lower levels. And uh, my next target is I'll, I'll recycle this uh, trend line. Always recycle, guys. Uh, I'll aim for this upside support line drawn from below the 17th of August. If I get that nice uh, drift here all the way to this territory, that's wonderful. Um, but for me to change my opinion and uh, start shifting to some higher levels, a break of this downside line for me is required. This downside line is drawn from the high of the 13th of July. Um, and then we'll take it from there. Maybe I'll keep an eye on some of these uh, EMAs here as well. But depends on how this is going to play, play. For now, I'm just keeping an eye on this downside line. Uh, Ripple. Uh, Ripple, so yeah, I mean, uh, HexCop1, I don't know if this answers your question, but, or maybe if you had a question or something, but look, at this point, it's, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside, however, as long as we stay below this territory right there, if we somehow pop back up, I'll take a neutral stand, if we break the downside line, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels. Uh, Ripple, uh, so this one is a little bit more positive, I would say, but still, look, nothing is positive in the crypto world. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, un 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 unless you get some good gains, that's the only positive thing in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, look, if we break the upside line here drawn from the low the 17th of August, then yes, I will consider a move lower. If I want to go higher, I would like to see a push up of 0 0.55 territory somewhere around here, and then I'll go to the upside. This is my simple approach. Uh, hex cup one, uh, no problem, no problem. Um, so this is my simple approach here on, on Ripple. To be honest, I don't want to overcomplicate life here because it's it's just kind of moving nowhere here at the moment so let's uh you know take a careful approach for now uh polka dot uh, polka dot uh, this one i have looked at this one for a, a while ago and i said to you look we have a few downside lines here which are still kind of in play so if you're looking for some higher levels on this one wait for a break of this steeper downside line drawn from the high of the 21st of july um, then we could aim for this downside line drawn from the high of the 19th of february um, for the uh, downside uh, yes i need to see a drop below this zone 
uh, below this 3.91 territory in order to consider some lower levels because a forthcoming this way a forthcoming lower low will be confirmed and we will be at our all-time low in that case basically so we are already uh, at our all-time lows uh, but um, look who says that it's not possible to create a new all-time low um yeah at the moment we just need to see a break below the 3.91 territory and that's it so um yeah that's the game plan for polka dot uh the moment i mean as you can see it's not feeling very well i mean i don't know i don't know is it one of those coins that are gonna be um that are gonna disappear eventually and just you know we'll keep the the major ones the the you know the bitcoins ethereums and little litecoins and bitcoin caches and uh ethereum classics and so so uh and ripples yes um or actually will polka dot will revive itself and you know push back up but at the moment even from the i don't know from the fundamental side i don't know much to be honest on the polka dot i'll have to admit that i haven't researched uh, this one too much but from the technical perspective it's not really looking good now let's jump into a few pairs aud usd look at this mess and look at this madness and i think this madness requires a restart uh to create to make way for some new madness look i have removed all the all the, uh, all the lines here i think they stopped working and uh, but a few i will return uh, like for example this and uh, for example that and so basically i'm returning back the range so yes uh it, it we are still in a range uh if we take a simplistic approach on this one then i would say that there is a good chance to move lower because why because look before according to the ta rules uh when whenever we enter like a trend like a oh sorry not a trend like a triangle or a um or like a range or something like that we look at the prevailing trend if the pre prevailing trend for example in this case is to the downside then the likelihood to break uh lower is greater uh so that's why you know we could examine the downside scenario but still the rule applies the same rule applies is that if we do get that break or actually the other way around we have to wait for the break in order to get comfortable with a certain idea with a certain uh direction so that's why for me at this point i'm just observing the price action i'm living my life and i'm waiting for this pair to make a move um either through the upper side of this uh range where when and then we will aim we'll be able to aim for the 200 day ema or i need to see a drop below the lower side of this range where we after that we will aim for this territory around here near the 0 0.6272 and then maybe mm, this area right here as well the 0 0.6210 so yeah that's my uh, game plan on AUD usd uh, ADJPY, just a quick update. So look, this one is still near this key uh, area of resistance. So I need to see a pop up of that 95.86 territory in order to go higher. For the downside, I need to see a drop below the 94.54 zone in order to go to the downside. Look, I get it. There's a lot of territory that we could be missing out here. But to be honest, I'd rather say, stay safe than sorry. Um, and uh, AUDJPY at the moment is something like a barometer for market sentiment. So if we are looking at indices, because again you know when when indices sell off we see aud jpy also declining uh we also see that and that one drifting lower because again uh, aud is a commodity uh, it's a commodity linked currency it's a risk currency um and the a and jpy is a safe haven so people start jumping into safe havens uh but at this point as you can see and this is where my theory of uh maybe the markets could still go back to the upside a little bit is that aud jpy is not really kind of selling off and uh okay there is another problem of uh uh, higher inflation in 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 japan and uh devaluating um devaluating uh, in, uh, japanese yen but i think that the boj is not going to leave it like that so it might step in at some point but again uh will when will that be we'll see but at this point look uh, aud jpy there is a good chance still for this one to drift uh to the upside but a confirmation break is required AUD NZD, there we go. We're drifting nicely to the downside so far. So good. I said I talked about this yesterday. I said to you that look, I'm keeping an eye on this 1.0779. Okay, tick. And then the 1.0729.
we overall uh, we are we're here in the range so we're aiming for the lower side of the range um nzd usd so this one's very very interesting i like it a lot because it is in a triangle and uh, basically it, it is coiling up so what it means that um maybe just maybe um we could um we could see a pop here at some point right but again look um it's not a, a beautiful triangle i would say uh, because what i wanted to say is that if the you know we look at the prevailing trend the prevailing trend was to the downside look there is still hope that we could see a move lower but um we need that confirmation break first so i'm not going to speculate on this one too much i'm just going to wait for this one to make a move uh, out of this triangle pattern and then i'll do something about it but at this point i'm just observing the price action uh yeah i think this, this way was better uh cat chf cat chf is uh, looking at um some higher levels and uh well um so far i mean so good look I, I mentioned this before i said to you that if we do pop and stay above the uh 200 day ema then yes the next target my next target is, is the area in between the 0 0.6822 and 32 levels well it seems like we're on the right track um still aiming for that one and once we reach that um then i'll i'll reevaluate maybe we'll get a bit of a retracement uh so yeah this is uh if by any chance we decide not to go all the way here and we start retracing earlier i will take uh i will start looking at some lower levels if we do drop below the 200 day ema uh, USD JPY. Uh, so, my target got reached. The 148.85. Uh, we reached my target. So, what's next? Uh, next is the fact that we broke it and we're still trading above it. So, in a way, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, pushing the uh, limits of BOJ to a certain level. So I think that they decided maybe to keep it on all the way to 150 and then, you know, because previously it was 125. Oh, sorry, 145. Um, and now I think that maybe they allowed themselves a little bit of room for maneuverability and, and uh, that's why maybe they're going to run it all the way to 150 and then we'll see what's going to happen from there. So 150 territory becomes quite an interesting target as long as we stay above the 148.85 territory. If we start falling uh, below, uh, below it, if we start falling below it and we do fall then maybe somewhere below this 148.46 this is where i'm going to lift my barrier for the downside then yes i will consider a move lower uh usd cad a uh, beautiful rebound here that's great um so i would say this way that um if we continue to trade below this territory right there uh, below that 1.35 then there is still hope for some downside and i'm not getting rid of that idea yet if we do pop above the 1.35 and stay above it then okay yes I'll, I'll consider a move higher uh i think i need to lower down my appetite appetite a little bit here and i'll aim for the 1.3640 zone and then we'll see uh usdch chef this one boom there we go all actually i would say mission accomplished on this one just bear with me Uh, mission accomplished because I said to you that I'm going to aim for the 0 0.9148 zone right here. And to be honest, okay, we didn't really hit that exactly, but it's never the exact level. It's always the area around it. So I keep on saying this all the time. So, yeah, um, look, if you were in pro, if you took the trade here and you were running it all the way to all the way here, I think that this is a perfect point to take away the profits and just leave it you know and because we want to see or at least i want to see what's going to happen here with this uh with this barrier right there so uh like i said we have already approached it so now my, my question is can we see a bit of a retracement uh something like that look it could be quite healthy i would say but you know what what i'm leaning to more is to see something like a pop here and then a, a struggle to stay above it above this hurdle and then drift back down so something like that uh we have seen this happening several times so yeah uh let's consider that option um if we do somehow pop and stay above this territory look i mean yeah of course uh we should continue targeting the upside but i think that my next target will be somewhere around here near the 0 0.9222 level or 23 zone approximately around there 
and then we'll go from there guys uh gbp usd so there we go beautiful uh reach uh we reached my target. uh my target got yeah reached the 1.22 zone congratulations to everybody because look i talked about this 1.2308 zone and there we go we uh, last week i spoke about this territory and, I, and there we go i said that if we do drop and stay below it then yeah i'll go lower and i'll aim for this one so now i am taking a pause a little bit although this is declining further but i think that uh, we might see some holdups around here near the 1.2182 um yeah so look if we continue to trade here uh near let me just put this highlighted zone right there if we continue to uh trade uh around this territory then maybe a bit of a retracement here at some point could be possible a rebound like a correction back to the upside towards this downside line but look at this point i'm observing this highlighted zone right here this is between the 1.2182 and the 1.22 zones uh levels uh so yes uh, if we stay above it then maybe a bit of a retracement back up could be possible gbp and zd <clears throat> um also another oh beautiful um hold up near the 200 day ema so that's absolutely fine um look again mission accomplished here i've talked about this one a while ago so i was aiming for the 200 day ema now my question is can we see something like uh this can we see something like this can we see a rebound from that 200 day ema and a push back to the 100 day ema so i'm gonna consider this scenario if we continue to trade above the 200 day ema right here if we fall below it well guess what i will aim for this upside support line drawn from the low of the 2nd of september but so far we are uh drifting nicely towards that uh psychological two level um but again like i said i i'm kind of hoping maybe to see a bit of a rebound here push back up um and uh yeah um um the question now for me is like i said can we get that rebound so this is where i'm being careful i'm just observing this one to be honest i'm not really touching it but it could present itself with a nice opportunity later on again euro chf uh, still still battling that downside line i mentioned this yesterday to, uh i said to you that i need to see a, a nice good move above it and i need to see the body daily candle staying above that downside line drawn from the high of the 31st of march um i'm not getting that yet so i'm waiting yeah i'm waiting because look for my downside scenario is i need to see a drop below this um upside line right here and then yeah we could go a little bit uh lower but for the upside again yeah i need to see a break of this downside line and uh, look even from the shorter term perspective for, for the downside what you could do here is you could keep an eye on that 0 0.9650 territory and if we do fall below it and stay below it then yeah i will uh maybe consider a bit of a retracement here towards this upside line but if that upside line get, gets broken well yes lower levels here could be met but at the moment we are near this downside line so let's see if we can clear it euro cad boom yesterday look at this thing here euro cad just declined and uh yeah we fell below some of these targets i haven't looked at this one for quite a while but to be honest i think it's time because look we have cleared this territory right there this is quite an important area of uh support that we've cleared um my only question now here is um, are we not forming something of a falling veg pattern so basically something like around this but you see this is the problem this is you cannot i'm i'm probably jumping way ahead of myself i'm trying to foresee the future unfortunately i don't have the crystal ball and i keep on saying that i only have the, my leather ball here so that one uh, sometimes works sometimes doesn't so we have to admit that and uh yeah uh look at this point um we we fell below the 1.4284 zone okay that's fine uh can we go further south here here guys uh well let's wait and see because look uh we found good support around here this is where the interesting bit is, is the 1.4235 so basically if you're looking for some lower levels a clearance of that territory would be required um but until we get that um i think that maybe there is also an option for a rebound um but again i'll get more comfortable with higher levels on on on, on euro cad is if 
as if if we do uh, pop above this downside line right here. So this one is drawn from the high of the uh, 15th of September. If we do climb above it, I will start aiming for some higher levels on this one. Uh, Euro USD finally. Um... Oh, by the way, here I do have the um, the Treasury uh, U.S. government bond yields, and I just wanted to say that look, this is the 30-year uh, government bond yield, and look how how rapidly we're accelerating. So basically, it's showing that the economy is not very, if not feeling very well, and I think that the all these like talks about government shutdowns are kind of uh, or U.S. government shutdowns are kind of kicking in, and uh, you know. Uh, Putting pressure here on the uh, the bond yields and uh, pushing them higher. So look, uh, it's not good for you know the bond holders. Um, so, um, but at the moment, uh, let's wait and see. Of course, how this is going to stabilize or if it'll stabilize. But the two-year uh, bond yield is actually greater than the the 30 year so that's uh that's where the interesting bit is is um yeah that's kind of a, one of the signals for a possible recession um a four wall uh we can talk a bit about gold uh look i talked already about gold so um but look let me finish with the euro dollar first because again i i i didn't finish that one but um Euro USD fell nicely below my my hurdle here, and this is what I talked about yesterday. So I said too that if we do fall below this territory, I'll go lower and I'll aim for this 1.05 uh, 50 zone, 1.05 16 territory, something like that. So yeah, uh, in general, uh, I think that I actually why why didn't I why I didn't mark the 50 zone? This is a very nice target. Let me just grab this uh, line right here. Mm, there we go. So yes, 1.0550, actually a very nice target. Let's see if we can reach that one. Uh, for now, like I said, um, as long as we remain below the 1.0635, then yes, I will target this 1.0551. For the upside, I need to see a, a push back at least maybe above the 1.0635 territory in order to consider some uh, our larger corrections to the upside, but probably more buyers could join in if we do pop above the downside line. And uh, just a, a four wall, just especially for you, um, gold, look, I mean, we are coiling up. We are in this mess right now. And I, I, when I said yesterday that if we do continue to trade below the 1924 territory, I will go lower. I'll aim for the, for the 200 day EMA tick. I'll aim for the 1.9 uh, 1914 level tick. And now um, the question is, can we reach this upside support line drawn from the low of the 20th of August? Well, um, it's sure there is sure a good possibility of seeing that. So long story short, at the moment, I'm yes, I'm targeting this territory. Uh, this upside line I mean and then I'll take it from there maybe we'll rebound and maybe we'll you know jump back up so who knows but uh, uh, then if we do reach this upside line I'm taking a neutral stance uh, because then I'll be waiting for a clearance of one of these trend lines in order to consider the next short term directional move so that's my game plan for uh, for gold and for the other instruments right there so guys honestly i hope you found it useful uh thank you very much for your comments i really really appreciate that thank you very much for your time thank you very much for killing an hour of your life with me really thank you for that um but yeah if you want to catch me tomorrow morning as always at my traders uh or should i say traders my daily pitch international for my traders mm, yes uh it's six o'clock gmt time so yeah for now have a beautiful trading day stay safe have your stop losses in place don't risk uh risk only what you can afford to lose and everything will be fine so thank you very much and Hey there, thank you very much for watching this one till the end, I really appreciate that. So, like this video, we speculate your next mouse movement will be towards the subscribe button.